Yeah. Well, you gotta get to the front and start uh, getting everybody's reaction. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Come on, keep going. I think Peyton has kind of destroyed it. Thank you again for everything. That's this is just a great day. Freeman, I want to thank you. You've been a champ at this. So remember, well, remember that we're going to keep telling everybody that. We got to do that. And to all of you, thanks for doing what you did today because uh, we do have low numbers in the province, and you guys are way better than any politician or teacher or somebody lecturing people to do it if it comes from kids. So I'll give you the nickel tour of the premier's office here, and I'll show you the cabinet room, and then I better get to a meeting. This is, uh, well, I mean, this is a pretty good place to work. I'm just a tenant here. I could get evicted in a couple of years because the landlords are, well, the people of the province. And they, they decide who gets to hang out here. But it's a pretty amazing place to come and work. As long as we, as long as the building's been open, this has been the office of the premier. And then uh, the room I'll show you has been the cabinet room where cabinet meets. And I've made a few changes in here. Um, I like history, so I've tried to put a few historical pieces in. This table here is pretty cool. This was the first cabinet table for the province from 1912 to 1956. I kind of found it in a room not being used. So you think about what was done at this table. I mean, everybody knows who Tommy Douglas is, right? Tommy Douglas and his cabinet ministers would have hammered out Medicare at this table. Uh, we have actually only two pictures of it being used that were uh, at the archives when we asked for them. One is uh, both from the Douglas era. One is his cabinet working at the table, and the other when it used to be in the cabinet room, is up Their Majesty and the Duke coming to visit, and they're over in, in that room as well. The other historical pieces include this desk. There's only three in the building that were original, because the company that got to build the building was also hired to do all the furnishings. So that desk is from 1912. There were only three when I found out that I was changing the office, and I stole that one from the Minister of Agriculture. Uh, and over, behind, uh, over by George, there's a big clock. And that's another original piece from the building. It was given as a gift to Saskatchewan from the province of Quebec. In 1914, they, the company that did the building and designed all the furnishing was from Montreal, and so they hired that same company to give their uh, to, to give the gift. Uh, the clock really doesn't work very well. Never does. <laughs> never, you know. So insert your own comments here. But here's a great story about the clock. Uh, last spring, I declared it Corner Gas Day in Saskatchewan when the last episode aired. Remember that day? And Brent Butt was here. Remember that day? And Brent Butt was here. So we, Brent Butt and I, had lunch at this table here. And I was telling him about the office. And I told him about the clock. Uh, and he said to me, and his, he's got family that still lives in, where is he from originally? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> perfect. So he's got family still living there. And he, I said to him the same thing I just said about the clock. It doesn't really work very well. And he said, you know, my brother Elmer lives in Tisdale and he fixes clocks. So we phoned Elmer about in Tisdale and he came down and he fixed it. And he has the record for making it run the longest. It's stopped now again, but we'll get it fixed. But in what other province could you be kind of sitting with the star of Canada's most popular sitcom? And he's got a guy, his brother still fixes his clocks and his deals. He says, just give him a call. So that's kind of the quick tour of the office. And the rest of it's sort of some personal stuff that I have up. You can tell I'm a big football fan. And um, 
Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the helmets, uh, the collection of helmets that started there. It started with the U of S Huskies, that's my school and uh, that I went to and my, and my buddy of mine is the defensive coordinator there, has been for years. And so I, when I was the opposition leader, I would, and I still do, I dropped by Griffith Stadium when I was in Saskatoon and asked about the game coming up and they were breaking down the film and I'm kind of, I coach still and I'm a football nerd so I'd be hanging out there with me if I had time. And I asked the head coach if I could, I said, you know, I have a little a rider's helmet and a little open rider's helmet. <laughs> because those are my teams, in my opposition leader's office. And I said, I pointed at one of those, I said, I want one of those helmets, a big full-size Husky helmet. And he says to me, well, you're the opposition leader, aren't you? I said, yeah, I am coach. And he said, no, you can't have one then, because only winners wear that helmet. <laughs> so after the election, I phoned him up, and I said, coach, you owe me a helmet. And he sent that one down, and then the Rams found out I had a, a Husky's helmet. And the Prairie Thunder is the gray one. That's the junior team. They found out I was doing it. The Hilltops is the Saskatoon junior team. And then Gene Mikowski, who you probably know from the Riders, who's become a good friend, said, you better have a rider helmet. So he, uh, he gave me that one. And yes, I tried it on. And yes, it's massive. I could probably put one of the other helmets on and then put jeans on and it would fit. And then my favorite helmet is a recent addition. And two weeks ago, we declared it a day to be uh, Armed Forces Reserve Day in the province, about 20 reservists. Uh, have been then and are now have now shipped or preparing to go to Afghanistan. And so we had them over to the legislature, and then I gave them a quick tour of the office and did my little helmet thing. And then the major uh, from the armory, uh, Major Resenet, who's a friend, said, "You know, you're missing a helmet up there." And I knew what he was talking about, so I said, "Well, I'd love to put that one up there." So that's my favorite one. That's from the dragoons here uh, here in Regina. The rest of it's just sort of pictures on the wall and. In our family, that's a pretty dated picture. Even, unfortunately, even the dogs passed away. We have another dog, <coughs> a neurotic border collie, has taken Oreo's place there. There's our kids. And um, there you have it. That's the quick tour. Well, I, we'll let you peek into cabinet room here quickly, and then I better go to my meeting. You guys have any questions about anything at all? No. Anybody been in the uh, in this room before? Cool. It's a pretty neat place to work. It is. We'll quickly show you the cabinet room and then I'm not sure. Yeah. Now, uh, <laughs> you guys want some pictures? You guys want yeah. some pictures? Go ahead. <laughs> Megan, you want some picture behind the yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I interview you? What? Did I interview you? No. We need an interview for this. Why do I have to? Come on. What's going to be on? Do you want to interview? Yeah, hmm? <laughs> do you want to interview? <laughs> sure. Okay, what's your name? Kristen Gray. And how do you think about this? Um, I think it's a really great cause, and it's glad, I'm glad we can do something to help out other people in Canada. All right. Thank you. Just shut the door.